Hello, fellow watchers and enjoyers. Ash and Piggy here from Watching Wolford bring you yet another edition of Watching Wolford. It's the podcast of the same name. It's episode 78, and today's episode is going to cover the biggest storylines and takeaways from week 24 of 2024, all the episodes from the 25th of June all the way to the 28th, as the week is all mangled because of the football. Come on, England! Uh, um, my music stopped as soon as I said that as well. It was ominous. Oh, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen like, the fucking Americans taking the piss out of the British, or the British taking mm. the piss out of the British. Just like, Come on, England! Start, score some fucking goals! Like, the, I it's, mean, it's a ball the biggest example of that, but not football, is when I went to a festival, I went with a bunch of Swansea people. And obviously, people across us would be like, uh, obviously, a bunch of English people going, ah, uh, hello, we ends. And it's like, all right, now, now you Welsh people, you're supposed to do an English accent to mock the English. And they go, ah, uh, hello, England. It's like, can, guys, guys, come on. Just, you missed the point. Yes, uh. um, but yeah, uh, this is a podcast. The main stories are going to be. Maya causes concern by rummaging through Harvey's things. Freddy interferes in Anna and Bobby's relationship. The police don't pursue the pastor case, but Levi returns with news. Nugget and Ravi's heart to heart and his failing health. And finally, which is, this is the main one. This is the aftermath of Stevie. So Stevie taking the money and the introduction of the new Mitchells. Now, just as this is obviously the, the hot button topic, just Im- immediate thoughts before we get into the normal podcast where we shoot the shit for half an hour. How, how do you feel about the, the, new, the new Mitchells? Uh, I love it because I think Stevie, is, no, Teddy's the other one. He's the main, he's the, he's the brother of Billy. Teddy's the dad. Yeah, Teddy is And, and the... Billy's brother, yeah. Teddy is going to, I should just speak to number three. Um, Teddy is going to like rival Phil, I believe, yeah. where Phil is going to get some like complex. It's, uh, it's like when uh, two people are in a relationship, but they're both dominant. So it's like, you be some mess up now. You they're, be some they're, both, they're both trying to alpha one another. Yeah, exactly. Um, so Phil's like, but, but Billy's the real Sigma. What the skibbity? Keep going. Teddy grunts me when I phantom men it. Um. Fuck you now. <laughs> um. So yeah, it is. It is like it's going to be fun seeing the two of them like clash, clash kind of. Although, what would you do if you did bust out like fucking terminology of like what of like what kids of now use like? Teddy what the like, skibbity? <laughs> Very, you're so phantom tax. You're so baby gronk. What the fuck are you on about, Teddy? You know, just, just mew with me. That's all I want you to do. Just fucking mew. Phil, with me. start gooning with me, brother. Ah, ah, ah. No, yeah. What do you reckon about Barney and uh, Harry, the the kids? Barney, I love Barney. He, he, he he's autistic. I'd assume. And he... <laughs> uh, probably. Let's be honest. He well, is... I will say, I it was. I'm pretty sure it was. It was Wolford After Dark who found a news article where I believe it was the actor was like, you know, it, it was a a guy with autism who was on stage and on stage it helped him like get over a bunch of anxiety. I I didn't. Fu- I don't remember the article fully, but I'm pretty sure it was Wolford After Dark who suggested, yeah, maybe he he has autism, and I can't lie. He he has the me haircut <laughs> from fucking. I had that haircut growing up, and obviously he's a bit more of an introvert, like bookworm. Which I love it. Like I, that, and also you have Harry who fucking. <laughs> if 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 Phil had a choice when Ben was born, if he could have chosen Ben or he could have chosen Harry. He would have fucking chosen Harry. That's what Phil wanted Ben Mitchell to be. That's the fucking guy that Phil wanted as his son. <laughs> Nobody's telling me otherwise. 
<laughs> like you know, tall, a bit, a bit of a fucking hot head, a bit of a ladies' man. Um, but yeah, uh, Barney. I suppose they also like they also have different ways to kind of allow the audience to like the characters a bit more. Uh, Ted is a bit crafty, but he's kind of he's that like proud dad who's got these like morals where it's like, all right, you know, top button done up. I notice that he never has his top button done up at all. Like he doesn't follow it either. Top button done up, and don't show us up. And then, the, and then the kids both mock it. And then he's like, you know, he's supposed to be a big gentleman when he gets into Billy's house. And Honey's like out the shower. He's like, ah, oh, oh, bloody hell! Ah, oh, oh, I'll put some clothes on. Um, and uh, and also in all the conversations, he does genuinely seem like a like a pretty decent lad. Like, he seems like he has morals. Then you have Harry, who is a charmer and a cheeky chappy. He'll kind of do some, you know, like, he was he was about to break into the fucking arches to try and get himself a job, like. Um, he also meets Penny, and they have a quick shag, which was hilarious, because, you know. Obviously, I, I, can, I can joke at some people in the subreddit's expense, because, like, that never happens! Like, mate, some people just want to fuck, all right? It's not a problem with that. Some people like sex. You don't like some people don't need to say "I love you" when you both climax at the same time. You know, some people just want a bit of fun. Um, what do you do if his climax sound was "Awooga, awooga, awooga"? <laughs> just fucking starts fucking <laughs> just screaming. I mean, it's always a funny one where someone's like, oh, oh, oh come on, baby. Gerard! Gerard! What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck it. Um, the but... fucking show, show is like a uh, coming sound. It's fucking, Thatcher! Thatcher! Close the mines! Close the mines! Fucking Brexit geezer, like, send the migrants back! Send the migrants back! You know? Look, all right. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> not, not condoning any of that, by the way. Uh, no, and finally you have Barney, who Barney he reads his books. He's a bit, basically, I'm, I'm look, I'm seeing myself from about five years ago in Barney, and I'm, uh, I, I'm like, oh, no, no. But he seems like a nice lad. Him and Avani meet, and Avani's kind of. I think she, she's just curious. I don't think Avani's met too many, like, fucking introverted bookworms. So she just kind of like, no, oh. yeah, that's pretty, pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, so that just an immediate one. Obviously, we'll talk more about it as we get to the notes. But this is the Watching Wolf of Podcast. It's episode 78. So you've been here for about three episodes. <laughs> If YouTube suggests anything, uh, the first 30 minutes is a shoot and the shit. Obviously, it'll be a bit swayed now. We spent the first 10 talking about your senders. So from like the 10 minutes to the 40 minute mark, probably be a shoot and the shit if we're feeling it. And then obviously from that point beyond, we'll be going through pretty structured notes about what actually happens during the week. And I will just remind everybody of the topics one last time before you shoot the shit. Maya causes intrigue by rummaging through Harvey's things. Freddy interferes in Anna and Bobby's relationship. The police don't pursue the Pastor Clayton case, but leave our returns with news. Nugget and Revy's heart to heart and the boxing contest and the aftermath of Stevie taking the money and the introduction of the new Mitchells. But there we are. Fuck me. We've been on it today. How are you doing, mate? How have you been? I've been doing good. Uh, first, I'm going to ask. Fucking hell, he's... Oh, I'm, I'm gonna cry! <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm doing alright. Um, I'm having I'm having a good time. It's uh, it's the first week back. Obviously, uh, we spent... We had a nice little two weeks off. And it, like, even at the start of the week, Picky's like, Oh, I'm excited to be recording again tomorrow, are you? And I'm like, no, nah, not really. <laughs> but it's it's been a... <laughs> it's it's been a decent week. Um, the main reason I was kind of like, ah, oh, we got to record this week, 
is because before we left, I was making all these big grandiose plans about how we're going to actually do what we said we were going to do. I'm going to write the fucking videos that I actually want to write now. I'm going to stop looking at other soap channels being like, oh, if only that was me for real, for real. It's like, you, you can just do it. Like, you know, we all, we all just start somewhere. But I've been working on a video. I'm working on a Hollyoaks video. Um, I'm working. The video is about who I think Hollyoaks is going to axe because Hollyoaks has been cut down to three episodes a week. There's going to be a massive time jump and like 20 of the cast are leaving. So I'm going to suss out who the 20 are and why. And then at some point in the future, I'm going to make a video suggesting who I would keep personally. So that's that that's that's undergoing. It's it's probably the most progress I've made on a video in a long time. So it's it's going to happen fairly soon. Um. Yeah. Uh. What else been happening? Well, we just just been doing everything. Like I said, in the last week we had a very fucking. In in the week before we left, we had a really fucking hectic schedule because we were trying to like plan out and like get the two weeks done, but uh. We 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 kind of keeping up the pace, right? When we tight, the the after hours were like, all right, we'll be done at like four, and then we chill the fuck out the rest day. But now we'll be done at like six or seven, and then good luck. <laughs> good luck. How you been doing, mate? I've been doing, I've been doing good. Uh, I've been keeping up with the internet dramas that have been going on. Uh, just just like as a topic, because. Uh, I know people don't care about their opinions, but I actually kind of do. Um, so I do kind of want to know your situation on this. Obviously, we talked about it off camera, but uh, it's obviously the top of disrespect thing. I'm not going into like what why he was banned. I'm more sure going to go into the fact of like what he did and like uh, how do you feel about other YouTubers when they make a statement like that and then they just it's like nothing happened. But I will continue the stream. Tune in. Um, yeah, it's it's one of those things where I mean, fuck it, who cares? I'll talk about the whole thing. So the story goes, and I'll try this as unbiased as possible. But then again, I don't actually pay that much attention to it. I've just seen what people have seen. Let's be honest. Piggy's just seen what like the fucking what like moist critical says. <laughs> uh, I, did that... I did see the tweet as well because I was yeah I, I i did i i roughly i saw bits of the tweet but obviously the tweet got changed but in 2020 dr disrespect like fucking streamer fairly large where's the fuck got as the mustache and the mullet and the sunglasses um he was banned on twitch and till now it's not really been known why but as of late, I assume because there was some like court case going on, like some serious shit going on, where he wasn't allowed to talk about it. Um, but at this point, it's now all but been confirmed that Twitch banned him because he was messaging a minor. Um, and obviously, he's like a he's what like like thirty year old man. He's, he's got a wife. He's got a he's he's a yeah. So he's, he's like forty. He was 40, so at the time he would have been 35. Yeah. Give or take, 35, 36. And also he, uh, like also like he, what, what the fuck am I trying to say? Yeah, he basically went, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did I did, did message to the minor, but none of them was said like. But also... Uh, it, it was the ridiculous things where, I mean, first he was banned for doing, he was banned on Twitch for doing this. Now, Twitch doesn't really like to ban people. Well, they do, but never, like, indefinitely. Yeah. Like, the amount of times Twitch will ban someone, and then they'll, they'll get revoked, because it's like, ah, oh, Amaranth has got her tits out again. Banned for a week. Ah, <laughs> oh, this streamer's been caught give it, getting head on stream. Banned for two days. Like, you know, it, it, they never really do indefinite bans. And the only thing to suggest why he was banned was him messaging this person who's underage. So, and, you know, it's not like there's some mad safeguard and shit where it's like, oh, bloody hell, we can't have him saying hello to this underage fucking person. So, <laughs> you know, it suggests that something nefarious was going on. Uh, just on the, the, the court case, basically, 
he sued Twitch because uh, he, he he didn't think that I believe he sued him because he didn't think the the ban was like acceptable, and especially because like Twitch employees sometimes were like, oh we can't talk about the situation, but from what I've heard, it's very rough. And then basically yeah, but wasn't that... didn't it all come out because there was a like disgruntled Twitch employee who just went, yeah, this is what happened. Uh, basically, what happened is he, they went to court, they settled it, and then a uh, former Twitch employee who people found previous tweets in like, 2020 where like he was, he was he's in a band, so they found tweets where he was like, you buy tickets to my concert, to my band playing in this area, I might reveal what happened to Dr. Disrespect. It's a bit scummy, but I, I respect it. I, re- I fucking respect it. Like, fucking that's... What a- <laughs> Oh, that's how that, what said. absolute knobbery. What the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah, in, like, in like 2020 <laughs> or 2021, he, he the, the Twitch employee who revealed it, fucking, yeah, he, he was like, he'd be like, my band is playing in the Oz State Arena. Oz, he's not that Help big. us sell out, and uh, we, I will tell you about the Dr. Disrespect situation. <laughs> fucking... Yeah, like, like, I get, I get, realize it's just one port of leverage, but for fuck's sake, it'd be like if uh, <laughs> Tom DeLonge from Blink One Eight Two went, "If you come to the Blink concert, we will reveal photos of aliens existing." And it's like, okay, excuse me. But um, yeah, the Twitch employee came out and went, "Yeah, yeah, he did, he did sex the minor, and that's why he was banned." And <laughs> Doc disrespect the fucking idiot went, "Dude, it's settled. Why are we talking about this?" It's all in the past. They pay out my contract. That's it. And then obviously he went on stream and he went, I don't need to talk about it, guys. I'm not talking about it. It's over. They paid out my contract. That's it. Then obviously Monday he made the statement where he's where he basically is like the Wolf of Wall Street where he's like, yeah, yeah. I the just- statement is absurd because it's like, yes. Uh, well, it's also because he has, he has Twitter blue, which is shit. Uh, so he edited it multiple times where it's like, Yes, I did message a minor, and I didn't mean anything by it, which I think some people coined. It's like the people on To Catch a Predator, where it's like they come to the house with beer and condoms, like, I wasn't going to use them. (laughs) Well, Uh, I mean, you got caught and you got fucking banned for doing something dodgy, so it's not just fucking buying Girl Scout cookies. Also, some people are like, because obviously, you know, the internet likes to make memes out of it. Someone found out that Chris Hansen has cameo. So they fucking, they fucking pay Chris Hansen to talk about the situation. I've only seen a clip of it, but Chris Hansen's like, talk with disrespect. I've heard some things about you. I heard you like to whisper. I, oh, fucking fuck. Fuck's sake. I mean, I will say it's still a horrific thing that it's he's implied. A, it's horrific, but like the it's fact... just the scope of how it's blown out is quite wild, because it's and it's the issue with the internet currently is that now he simply realised. I mean, first the statement starts off with "I'm just going to cut through the fucking bullshit," which obviously you know are going to be lies. <laughs> I'm going to be completely. Honest with you, well, if you'd needed to say that, you fucking, you're clearly not very trustworthy, are you? Um, and like, <laughs> so I did, I did do it, but I didn't mean anything. It's like, all right, sound. And then he obviously kind of hijacked. He 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 does the Russell Brand approach, where it's like, ah, oh, the left are trying to cancel me. Uh, well, obviously not so direct, but it's like, oh, the left are trying to cancel me. They're all trying to cancel me. Oh, cancel culture is so bad. And obviously, when people hold war, like carry water for people they like, it's like, wow, you know, I can't believe it. it's guilty before any evidence is shown. It's like, you want evidence of a 40-year-old man texting a minor. I don't fucking think so. I don't fucking think so. That's illegal. That's fucking illegal. But it's all of these what ifs that the people who are like this, the the, the Doctor Disrespect fans are like, yeah, but yeah, but what if it's, you know, what if they were, what if they only just, like, if what if they were 18 a day later? Does that make it? It's like, you're jumping through hoops. 
for something that could be called grooming a minor, for fuck's sake. Like, Obviously, like... It's, it's, it's very impressive the amount of hoops that people jump through for people they like. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's very funny. Like, in hindsight, it's very funny. Like, like, for instance, I bet if like I murdered you or you murdered me, there'd be fucking people defending either of us being like, he didn't mean to. The knife just slipped into the person's body. He, he's, he's not guilty. He he did probably deserve it. <laughs> like the fucking yeah. Keanu defense where it's like, why didn't you just... Why didn't you stab him in that arm, not the heart? Fucking bitch. <laughs> we fucking strang- he was strangling her. Um, it, it, it's weird because I, I, like, obviously it's nice to talk about, like, it, Oh, yeah, I, I did check some on. The way he fucking words it, it's like, yeah, I did check some on, but I'm not fucking leaving. I'm fucking staying. You can't fire me. I quit. And like, I did sex the minor. Not me, of course. <laughs> uh, and some, of, some of this is getting clipped out of context. Okay. <laughs> um, it just, Dr. Speck saying, I did, I, I did message this minor, but I didn't mean anything. Yeah, all right. Is it like how some people accidentally... Oh, I, I didn't mean to sleep with your best friend. <laughs> it, just, it just fell. I just just fell. I didn't mean to. Uh, one thing led to another. It's like, all right, then. Someone's just fucking not trustworthy, are they? Um, but on the whole, like it's the whole thing about the internet where no matter what crimes are committed, fucking people will defend them. Cancel culture, cancel culture. Like, like, isn't that the whole thing with Russell Brand, where he just went a bit nutty, nutty and he just fucking... He's been nutty for a long time now. <laughs> like, didn't he just go on a whole conspiracy rant about how the like, lefts are trying to cancel him? Fucking yes. celebrities don't want him in Hollywood and shit. I believe well, it's because he was... It's because of, it's from one fucking dodgy thing to another. But it's because he was outed for being, like, a fucking... He had a bunch of sexual assault allegations um and there was a load of sexual assault allegations and sexual sexual misconduct allegations um and it's uh yeah and a lot of people have fucking yeah a lot of people came out and he decided to say like, ah, oh, it's all conspiracy theories. Everything's all bad. Uh, they're trying to take me down. Everything's fucking rough. And he just weaponized a bunch of conspiracy theories to act as if... <laughs> just, just act as if he's reasonable when he clearly isn't. It's like, I don't know what, if my next is like that Michael Jackson interview where it's... So Michael, what's your thoughts on all these rumours about you doing heinous shit to children? He's like, oh man, that's just rumours. That's just nonsense. That's just me. That's me. That's I'm not sure why this is the main focus. This is fa- this all, all, all horrific allegations. <laughs> like, yeah, it's just... It's not true, man. That's just Michael Jackson. Like, but fucking... It, uh, I don't like... People. I don't like internet celebrities. I know Russ Brands are an internet celebrity. But I don't like when internet celebrities have a heinous shake card and they're like, yeah, I did it. But so what? You're going to still tune into my stream. You're still going to donate. Who cares? I'm still going to make I'll ju- I'll just go to kick. It's like, uh, yeah, 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 it's fucked. It's it's really, it's really fucked. It's not, it just, it's, it's amazing what people can get away with if people like them. And it's just kind of horrific of the amount of shit that people do just get fucking brushed under the carpet just because he's popular or they're popular or she's popular. Like, uh, and then like another piece of shit that came out, even though it's been heavily employed, it's been a piece of shit for years. Go to all I'm Alex. Fucking, he's a YouTuber <laughs> who uh, he's a YouTuber who does like commentary on other YouTubers. Does that make sense? Like he. Like basically, yeah, he he rose to relevance by doing. He was a part of the like commentary, like twenty sixteen, that sort of like. And this right, this person's a fucking dick. All right. And obviously, like uh, you're ad- you're adding a lot, aren't you? And obviously, like he would make horrendous allegations against YouTubers. I think one of them was Slazo, I want to say. Um, 
And they, so basically, it came out that he's just a piece of shit, like behind the scenes. He ha- he was in an abusive relationship with a girl. He was the abusive one, where like the girl would be like, "Oh, I'm so sad, Alex," and he'd be like, "You fucking suck. Like, you're always making about you, you stupid bitch." And it's like, oh, "Jesus Christ!" And he would say the N word at them. He'd shout at them. He'd like he'd get aggressive at them. And like he he he, I wouldn't he wouldn't physically, he'd fervently abuse them. And like they'd be like, oh, he'll change one day. He'll change. And then obviously I'd assume there's going to be people defending him. Being like, yeah, but if he was abusive, why didn't you leave him? And it's like, well, it doesn't really work. It's, like it's never as easy as that. Yeah. Um, but, oh, Jesus, yeah. He's, he, it just, all oh, this allegation, probably is a piece of shit. It's not even allegations, it's proof. This woman did yeah. like a 30 page document with all the proof. I'm like, fucking hell. Fuck me. And like it's a it's a horrendous thing. Like I'm like Jesus. It's um Yeah, some uh, you know, e- e- ego and fame uh does does a lot of legwork. Oh uh, and the, that's why the, you have to pledge to not have a fucking ego. So and no, it's not funny, but the one thing I did laugh at was when him he was talking about like Yeah, but I'm an internet celebrity. I'm a celebrity. I make seventy five thousand dollars on a video. Like fuck off me. You claiming you're yeah. a celebrity, it's like us saying we're in EastEnders. You know, it's not fucking happening. Just because you make videos in your room talking about this YouTuber does not make you a celebrity. Like, a celebrity is someone who goes out in public and they get fucking trampled by TMC and it's like, oh, Dwayne, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, tell us who you're voting for in the next presidential election. Then he goes, Joe Biden. Fuck off, me. You know, that's a celebrity. A celebrity's not someone who's on YouTube. I say that, and no compare. I I describe it as like a uh, most YouTubers are like are like D list celebrities. Yeah. Like may, may, maybe a, a couple hundred thousand know them, um, but it's still somehow a decent chunk of uh, reach. For what it is, there we are. I start to. I feel like this topic's naturally wrapped itself up. Fucking. What what else do we got? What else have we been up to? Um, some uh, some Nickelodeon media leak. A whole uh, a whole like session of SpongeBob leak, like a recording session. Oh, I I, I got a bit worried when you started talking about Nickelodeon. Like, uh, <laughs> no, no, not again. No, please, pick it. again, again. Um, take it off. Um, but no, 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 a bunch of like lost, uh, a bunch of like media from fucking Nick. Because uh, there, for some reason, I don't fucking know, but like Paramount or whoever, like whoever servers, they're apparently easy to hack into. Because there's been multiple leaks from Nickelodeon, like and the Paramount and shit, and also MTV.com shut down and ComedyCentral.com shut down. The people are speculating that um, they're. they're like the networks are going to be cancelled, which I I agree with because you go on Comedy Central, watch fucking running anger management, friends, two and a half men. <laughs> Sorry, what's being cancelled? I I saw a funny video. Comedy Central like dot com's been cancelled. I don't even know what the fuck that is. <laughs> Comedy Central dot com basically. Oh, um, Comedy Central. Oh, okay. Yeah, so people are speculating that the net, like the channel might be cancelled, and I'm just saying. Yeah, but I mean, it'll probably get bought by something else bigger. And I, I let's just, be real. I was just saying, like, what, what's what's on Comedy Central? Like, fucking anger management, friends, uh, two and a half men, South Park, a Bob Bar- not Bob Burnham, a fucking. Uh, what the, oh yeah, Bob Burnham, Burnham did have some Comedy Central. Jeff Dunham comedy special, Ali Evans comedy special. But you know, it's not you're not getting the Fucking... best. <laughs> oh, sorry. I've just I'm I've, I've, I'm browsing the Senders subreddit, and someone made a post saying so. All the new Mitchells are sluts, right? Come oh. on. <laughs> oh. Well, where? I, I guess it's I guess it's the best word, but it's still like fucking. Why is it got to be such a such, such a grandiose statement? I prefer the term shagger. 
Shabba. Um, not not Shabba. Oh. Um, but yeah, what else has been going on? Not much, really. I think it's just been uh, we, we've just been just running it back necessarily. Uh, things will pretty much resume back to normal. I we we reached the point where we're really busy. We should consistently have episodes coming out without any breaks in between them. Uh, because we kind of change the way we record it rather than just doing one, we do two. Um, and like, yeah, um, we all are all ticking. Although, yeah, fuck me, this this weekend is uh lovely, especially considering the Wednesday recording session was fucking ah oh, twenty eight degrees, as I've got like a fucking ring light burning a hole through my brain. Just Oh, and then we're watching out. ECW and Survivor Series 2006, which you can check out on the One More Match channel um, in two weeks' time. Yeah, two weeks? Next week, maybe. I think next week. I think it's next week. Yeah, next week you can check it out. Um, yeah, I, I've, been, <laughs> uh, I've been preparing for the awards show. We need to talk about the awards for the One More Match channel because I don't know what it's going to be. I know people don't care about it, but I just like bring it up. Um, and we are preparing to do a storyline that Ash pretty much loves, I think. I love as well, but it, it, it just meant the shit. It just... It, the pieces were all there, and then fucking the higher power went... Yeah, fuck off, Wade Barrett. It's the nexus for people who... Are... It, was a, it was a very big rug pull. Like, oh yeah, yeah, we're in, we're in, we're in. Oh, I've just unplugged your seatbelt, and I pushed the ejector seat. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was it was a it was a show that oh not a show it was a group of wrestlers who grew, who came from this show called NXT and basically the entire storyline was they beat the shit out of everyone. They're taking over. Yeah, it's basically like we're the new generation. We're taking over. The, the, all these wrestlers are the old generation. And then basically Vince McMahon, the Booker at the time, went. John Cena, how about you beat them at SummerSlam, their debut match? And obviously, the rumor goes, Cena went, yeah, yeah, sure. And fuck it, just, like, half the team gets eliminated, and then John Cena comes back, buries the three of them within, like, about 10, 20 minutes. And then it's like, so everyone's like, the next second, oh, oh, oh. It's basically like an East Ender storyline, where it's like, oh, how's this going to end? And then it's like, oh, it ends because they all die. Oh. Oh, is there anything I suppose. Yeah. Uh, it's like, is there anything else to this throwing? No, it's just shit. But yeah, fucking. I suppose also on Who Done It, we finally made it to the point where Lucy dies. Um, yeah. Spoilers. Uh, and I'm not gonna lie. This is the time to. If you don't watch Who Done It currently, this is the time to get into it. Although I'm not sure why you wouldn't watch Who Done It. It's just more of this. <laughs> it's it's this podcast, but a bit more focused on 2014. Like we're at the point where I genuinely recommend like pull pull up the fucking iPlayer, start watching along because it it's very it's really good. Like it, you know, getting to revisit like the Lucy death and Ian just fucking collapsing like it was, it's fuck it's fucking awful. Like it's hard to watch. I mean, like in that sense. It's really hard to watch, but also, it's very fucking good. Spoilers for next week, by the way, but we get an iconic line in the show's history that's been memed to death. Yeah, it's Peggy yeah. Mitchell saying, Yeah, I am, I hope it's not. But you will no. find out next week. You will find out next week of who that is and what it is. But, yeah, I, I feel like, yeah, we've reached a point who done it where we have now killed the Lucy B. So now we're on the road to... Well, we didn't do it. <laughs> Although, then again, even if we did do it, probably would have been less of a shock than the actual murderer, so... You know. <laughs> we should have just... We shouldn't have started... We shouldn't have hit her in the head. We should have just hit her in the arm. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, do we have anything else, or have we naturally reached the conclusion of this? Do we want to actually start talking about the EastEnders? Just very quickly, uh, we've also booked our tickets to Wembley. So me, Ash, and Slater are going to Wembley, brother. Which I don't know how the day I come over to uh, record the podcast is going to work. 
and I'm sure when I get in, I'm going to be like a celebrity, like Mr. President, and get up to the room. Get in, get some grub. Watch the EastEnders, then record. I, I, mm-hmm. I'm going to feel like a president, like, Mr. President, Mr. President, they had the second tower president. It's like, oh, shit, get me in the room, get me in the room. Uh, tonight on EastEnders, they yeah. get shot. Um. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be great crack. Hopefully, it's going to be great crack, and it's not going to be miserable. I, 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 I'm looking forward to this trip. I, I think Ash is looking forward to this trip as well. He, he's going to blank it out for the next month and a half. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, my, yeah, anticipation is my biggest anxiety, so I'm not going to think about it till it happens. Yeah, he's, I'm going to like, oh, you're excited for Wembley? Wembley? What? Shut up. What's that? Fuck off. What? Leave me alone. <laughs> What's Wembley, Piggy? I'll know. think about it on the fucking train journey. Leave me alone. <laughs> um, yeah. I also, I also did some streams on the on the on the Twitch channel. Not not the Watching Wolf one, my personal one. The Apple Dream. Um, channel. I plan to do some more on there. So, if you've not had enough of me, even if you are getting a video every day, like you've got a video pretty much every day since last august <laughs> like you know there's i do do more over there um anything else no no i think it's time i cut to you and you start talking about the old shaggy 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 extenders yeah and this is all this is the section of the podcast where it cuts to me so piggy just, just fucking just head back having a having a sleep because i am i am the notes man Alright, Mr. Notesman, one, two, three, how are you doing there, pal? Go on. Fucking talk, talk. Alright, so... <laughs> He's just interrupting. Go on, go on. But you won't fucking do it. Give me... I need my space. Give me my space. Uh, so, yeah, main stories this time. A couple of sub-stories here. We have Freddy interfering in Anna and Bobby's relationship. You know, teasing the future because Bobby's leaving and, well, it feels like it's the natural progression and I have to eat my fucking, I, I have to grit my teeth. So maybe there'll be a confession hey, of me that. being wrong and everybody being right. Um, then we have Maya causing entry by rummaging through Harvey's things. We then have the police don't pursue Yolande's case, but leave our returns with news. Nugget and Ravi's heart's heart in the boxing contest, and finally the aftermath of Stevie taking the money and the introduction of the new Mitchells. I also, before we do this, I got some sunglasses when I was out. I'm gonna fucking check these fucking bad boys. Absolute gamer. Where, where, where are the rest of the podcast, mate? Nah, I'm alright. Don't wanna fuck my eyes up. Oh, also, fuck it. <laughs> I know we're talking about these. I've been I've been going on walks for the last week. Walks are fucking lovely. I touch grass now. I'm a man of the. I'm a man of nature. I'm a man of the world. I can't touch. Grass. It's been really fucking lovely. I'm afraid it's In fact, good. while you sat like you are gonna go sleep, fucking sit up, you little bastard. I, uh, I am. I'm listening. Fucking, I'm listening. Fucking, I can. I can tell your fucking brain shutting off. <laughs> I can hear it in your voice. You're like, yeah, yeah. I'm... I'm listening. All right. Um, someone's got to fucking switch the cameras. Um, but yeah, uh, there we are. So I've been I've been going on walks. I've been walking for like a week now. It's very lovely. I I enjoy going outside. I'm gonna go for a walk after the podcast. Great fun. Lovely stuff. It's been very nice. It's a nice little update. I'm no longer like counting the calories because I I've learned that I just don't eat enough. <laughs> Like you know, you know when people lose weight, they're supposed to they do like a fucking calorie deficit to like balance out how much calories you're supposed to get versus how many calories you would get. So if you're supposed to eat like two thousand calories a day, you're probably supposed to have like one thousand five hundred, one thousand six hundred ish, depending on like your body your body weight and all that shit. Yeah, I went. I just don't eat enough calories in general, so <laughs> I don't buy in enough food to actually do this. And I'm not going to fucking spaff a bunch more money, so fuck that. But I will keep doing the walks. 
All right, so I did all the I did all the intro I did all, did all of the storylines though. So now time to actually talk about the EastEnders. First topic is Freddie interfering in Anna and Bobby's relationship. The back the, the backstory to this is Bobby and Anna haven't seen too much of each other lately, and when Bobby wants to have a chill night in, Freddie quickly goes, "Mate, you've not seen each other in a while. Why you want to just watch some fucking TV like?" You know, get some romance. Have a have a nice night together. So they obviously fucking. So Bobby then like dresses up like a fucking butler and like chauffeurs him to this date on the top of the Queen Vic. Nice little picnic, lovely stuff. Um, they have started to tease a love triangle, which I will say they didn't initially. Just to give myself some credence. They didn't tease the love triangle initially beyond uh, Anna and Freddie sleeping together. Like, they didn't... They, when it set it up, it wasn't f- f- Bobby and Anna. Uh, uh, Freddie... Oh, f- fucking hate it. Why is Bobby Brazier his fucking name and Bobby a character in the fucking show? Why did we watch Strictly last year? It's fucking ruined me talking about Freddie and Bobby. It fucking wrecked me. Um... But at the time, it didn't feel like Bobby and Anna were supposed to be a thing. But ever since Freddy's come back, now that he actually did surprisingly well on Strictly, came top three, and uh, had to... And then then he did the uh, tour the months afterwards. Obviously, now they've come back. He's clearly shown that he has a bit of an interest in Anna, and Anna has kind of missed Freddy probably more than she's had fun with Bobby. So, yeah. And Anna seems to be happier with Freddie's company. And she seems to flirt with him a little bit. Where they, they, they kind of joke like, oh, you know, Butler and the Buff. And then they both blush. That being Anna and Freddie. And then she's like, oh, I'm, I'm only bloody joking. God. <laughs> Just blushing like a motherfucker. But yeah, now I do have to admit. There is very little chemistry with Bobby and Anna, which I do think is a choice to tease this triangle. But in the end of the day, they have that. There's a nice little pan out shot as they're all three with Anna in the middle, and it's a nice little camera shot. But yeah, Freddie and Anna are happening. You were right. I was wrong. Not Piggy, of course. The viewers and the Reddit. Something's right, there's nothing. Yeah. Yep, that's it. He's back to sleep now. Fucking. Can... Uh, what? What? This is my name? What? <laughs> um, Maya. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's it, though. It's a very small little sub story. Not much to say about it. Anything to say about Bobby Anna Freddy? No. Fair enough. Um, next up, we have Maya kind of eh, just doing some dodgy things. She's being really suspicious now, and it's hard to believe what is actually going on. Maya wants Harvey to want to come to Harvey to watch the England Slovenia game, which I will say that game was shit. As someone who watched the game, it was fucking garbage. Um, she seems to be quite upset to be in the busy Queen Vic and. Probably with Jean, she does. She's not too keen on Jean. She knows that Jean's kind of gonna suss her out. So she's like, "Ah, oh, bl- I've just, I've just got a bloody leave so soon. I, I just, I just need to leave." But Harvey says, "Oh, you know what? Let's go. Let's go back to. Let's go back to the Slater house. We'll watch it on the TV." Um, Maya seems to kind of. Maya tries to kind of make Jean like her but also not really it's just it's a very weird like third wheel type scenario where Harvey and Maya want to spend time together Jean's in the middle not really understanding how football works which in fairness the round robin like groups of the of football are very confusing (laughs) so I'll give them credit I don't fucking know who any of the teams are gonna face um but she offers to go make the tea. She finds herself al- uh, she finds herself alone in the kitchen, and she just starts digging around. 
just starts digging around the cupboards like she's really trying to investigate something. Um, and when she's been gone a long time, Jean finds her and spots her very fucking stupidly going through some bank statements. Like, fucking... It's like... It's like she has her back turned to the fucking kitchen door. She has her back turned to the kitchen door with paper, like, fucking up here. And then Jean appears. So, like, what are you doing? Uh, nothing. Uh, I just couldn't find the sugar. So I had to look for it in this drawer. Oh, fucking hell. Uh, mate, um, uh, how fucking... How shit is Maya at hiding things? <laughs> She's fucking shit. Yeah. Hello, you there? I am. I am, don't worry. Don't worry, mate. I'm here. I'm just... <laughs> something. All right, fair enough. I'm here. I'm um... Here. I'm, I'm, I'm... Hold on, hold on, sorry. You, only you can see. I did the two of us. I'm here, you know, only. Nah, classic. Um, well, you, 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 you had that face when you have when you're editing where you're like, I'm in the fucking zone. Don't nobody fucking... <laughs> Words can't be heard. I'm in the zone. Fuck off. What the fuck is my dad What the fuck? What the fuck? Um... But yeah, uh, so Jean catches Maya snooping and is really out on her. She's like, I don't fucking trust this bitch. I don't fucking trust her. Um, and then Harvey can't watch the rest as it turns out that the Slaters are nicking next door's Wi-Fi. <laughs> so they booted them off. So they just they just can't watch the fucking telly. <laughs> and Maya then suggests, oh, let's just go back to the pub. Um, but, like, her and Jean are not getting on. And in the pub, Jean stands up to Maya, and Maya just kind of fucks off. Maya then apologizes to Harvey. She's, she has a shit excuse. She's like, oh, I was just looking for food, you know? I'm, I'm skint. I needed the food to get by. And then he offers to help her shop CVs around. And he then buys her food, and he offers her a bit of cash to tide her by. Honestly, from what everything seems, it seemed like in the kitchen she was looking at a bank statement. So she was trying to figure out how much money he actually has. And also, now she's kind of sponging off him. It feels like in a week or two she's going to be like, Ah, oh, I'm going to get kicked out of my house if I don't get three grand. And then Harvey's going to think about it, but Jean's going to snap him out of it at the last second. I thought, I thought she, she was involved with the bombing of Archie Barchie's, her husband. Uh, I mean, maybe, but, like, well, it's, they, they, this is a slow burn storyline, apparently. It's a very slow fucking, not much has really changed. It's just Maya is sus. And we don't really know what to do, like. Will Harvey catch her before it's too late? I mean, no. He's a fucking idiot. So, like, he's so desperate. He's so desperate to have a friend. I'll be a friend, um, I'll be a friend. Yeah, but do you, do you know what the offside rule is? Then you can't fucking help him. Because he's only got one interest. Football. I'll talk about taxis with him. How about that? Oh, taxis. I thought it said taxes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Harvey, how much do you get taxed? Just a quick question. How much do you get taxed, Harvey? I just want to know. Um. But yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, some more dodgy stuff with Maya and Harvey. Who really knows where it's going? At this point, I guess... <laughs> At this point, I guess, it's the most likely that she's some sort of, like, grifter who's trying to figure out, like, trying to understand... trying to Basically, just trying to get some money off of him and maybe, like, scam him out of something. Um, but yeah, who the fuck knows? They've not really given away enough to actually figure out what the fuck they're doing. All right, so just, now... Hmm? Didn't they just do a scabbing storyline? When? 
with 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 the woman being pregnant and faking it and faking it. I mean, yeah, but like, well, it's just more so. It's we don't know what the fuck it is. Like, maybe, maybe she is actually the the wife of the bloke who Aaron's son murked. Like, maybe, maybe she is, or maybe she's gonna like build up the friendship and then she's gonna just destroy him. Like, I don't know. We don't know where it will go. Can, um, can, can she just make Harvey leave the square? <laughs> no, <laughs> for some reason. For some reason, he's staying, despite being mediocre. I do love Harvey, though. I do love him. He, if he needs best I mean, he's, he is fine. He is... Uh, uh, he is a better character than he has any right to be. But I'm also very glad we don't get very many fucking... I'm very glad we don't get that much of him. There we are. Um, but yeah, now time for the more serious topic as we get some more news on Yolande's case. Um, and at the start of the week, she has a bit more, she feels a lot more comfortable. She feels a lot better as Plastic Layton, as of last week, got locked up. But unfortunately, the police come round and they tell her there's just not enough evidence, is there? Which unfortunately in these cases is to generally be expected but and the family around and they're rightfully outraged and this setback kind of it just destroys yolande inside and she decides fuck it let god deal with him she talks it through with elaine and how upsetting it is and there is a funny line where she says is it unchristian of me to say that i hope he pee peed himself which Decent line, funny line. It was, uh, and then, then, then you just have a lane to just be like, oh, I would have said worse. <laughs> yes, you fucking would. Uh, why didn't she just say, I hope he pisses himself? Well, because she's a, you know, she's, yeah, she, 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 she's, she's a good Christian. You put pisses in a bad word. Yeah, but it was, it doesn't work. It doesn't work if she if she says I hope he pissed himself. It's not it's not Yolande. It's a bit too fucking harsh. the 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 whole joke is that she's like, ah, oh, is it really bad of me to say I hope he falls over and farts? Like, but well, no, fucking how fucking insignificant is that? Like, I hope he falls <laughs> over and shits himself all over the place. I, 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 well, I, I, you're not, you're not, you're not getting it. <laughs> like, why, why would your land day say, I hope he pisses his pants? But her saying, saying like, oh, you know, you know, oh, sorry, God, I hope he wets himself. Like, you know, yeah, if she wets himself, I, 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 I just don't like, oh, I hope he pee pee. Yeah, but, yeah, but pee peed is funnier. Yeah, who? Everyone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The EastEnders humor isn't up to your standard. Exactly. Thank you. Where all, all you need is for someone to cry, and you go, "Ha ha 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 ha! His family's dead!" Ha ha ha! Fuck you, know, All right. Oh, 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 all right. Oh. I guess we can have a nice little fun joke. <laughs> um. But uh, yeah, Yolande, w Yolande wouldn't use those words. Those are curse words. She wouldn't use them. She's a good Christian. You're a good Christian and you use those words. The, the joke, I'm definitely not. The joke is how inoffensive it is, despite Yolande thinking it's offensive. There we are. Banger. Nailed it. You Great joke. You are a Christian, from what I can tell. Or you're Jewish. Where is this going? I don't have to explain it. <laughs> where is this fucking joke going the pastor yeah so and enough of that it was a nice little funny joke before something pretty horrific happens as Yolande's picking up a prescription the pastor finds Yolande on her own and basically threatens her by being like look a worse man would have hated you and would have made you pay and despised you 
but God and I forgive you. Just like, fuck this guy. <laughs> fucking, fuck this pastor. He is fucking awful. I just, I feel really bad for Yolande. Uh, this is, um, this is the, mm-hmm. like, this is going to be interesting to see where this goes. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, doggy, doggy, where's the doggy? Um, uh, I don't know. Have you, have you taken something? What are you fucking on? Oh. Doggy? There's a doggy outside. I heard him back, or I heard her back. Uh, but I, 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 I don't know where this is going to go, but I hope it goes somewhere. Like, I hope he does get his comeuppance. Uh, I, I I like the first bit. The first bit was funny to me. Oh. But yes, no, I, I agree. I, I hope it... I like it. I hope it goes somewhere. Probably will. Can't lie, mate. Nine, 100% it goes somewhere. I, I, but yeah, I, no, I, I, love, I, I agree. I just love that, that you think... Like, like, when I said, where's the doggy? You just looked at me. I, I looked... Like, obviously, the fans can't see my camera, but you just looked at me like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's just, it's, you know, it happens. Yep. Um, but yeah, essentially, but yeah, it's uh, it's awful how fucking how much of a piece of shit Clayton is. Um, and yeah, Yolande cries; it absolutely breaks her inside. She cries in Denise's arms and tries to deal with the Clayton news, but. The family rally around the, rally around as Levi returns. Levi, the member of the church who uh, she told and she opened up to. And they got a bit disheartened because he just suddenly upped and left. Some people thought the, thought the pastor killed him. Yeah, right, mate. The fucking, <laughs> the fucking priest mob. Hmm? The priest mob killed him, like. The, 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 the Pafia. That work, no? Uh, the, no. The, the um, Chafia, there you go. Church family, there you go. The God um, of powers. Why'd you keep going with this? And you're saying PP'd wasn't a funny joke. <laughs> it's the church mafia. The chafia. The waffia. You just say you're just saying words. What? <laughs> what? No. Um. But yeah, so Levi makes a surprise appearance. He explains how you know, which is also a heartbreaking revelation that we obviously know as an audience is that there have been others. He found uh, D- Delia, Delia, Delia. I don't remember the name properly, but yeah. I think it's the uh, uh, Odelia. I don't remember. It's it's only it's only been about two hours since I watched the episode. I I probably could have met, write, wrote it better, but uh, I'll just say Delia. Um, the victim from 2016. She wasn't believed either. He believes that her and 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 Delia can corroborate their stories, and that you know two is better than one. Especially with Levi being fully ready to support them and try help them, uh, try help them, try to take down the pastor. He knows that it isn't right for him to be able to walk around scot free, and they're both happy and upset with this revelation because now it kind of now because it's it's a, it's been so hard for Yolande to actually deal with this by herself. But now she's involving another person who has likely tried to put it in the past, likely tried to repress it and forget about it. So now, if she involves, if she involves, uh, if she involves Delia, now it's time to fucking. Now it's time to drag it all up for her when she may have just about managed to put it behind her. So, and she feels shame as well. Because she sees how, you know, Denise has been abused by men, how Chelsea has been abused by men. But she also recognizes that if she doesn't do anything, there's a high chance that the pastor strikes again. So, 
and Denise recognizes how much Yande has struggled, but reminds her that it isn't on you to take action though. Like you don't need to do this. It's hard enough. You've you've come so far in actually telling us and being open. Like you don't need to do it if you don't need to. And Patrick asks Yolande if she wants to leave, but she explains how she feels at peace. And she's staying at home with her family. She's confident knowing no one can take her god away, not even the pastor. She claims she feels no evil, but thou art for me. I am not alone. We fight. Which is a very good line. Um, Did she get for Winston Churchill like promo here, lad? They will fight them on the beaches. We will fight them. We will fight them in the sky. We we, we are. It's just like yeah, I land it. I agree. Yeah, just 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 quoting some some religious texts. Pretty cool. Um, Levi returns and has gotten in contact with uh, with uh, Delia and hopes they can meet and try to help build the case with Clayton with Levi's backing. And Yolande is face to face with her. And them just meeting and understanding what's happened just kind of puts them right back there in the awful headspace. Like, they both almost crumble just seeing each other and understanding that this has happened to someone else before you. Um, and, and, and Delia tells Yolande how, and we've seen this in the flashback, she did try to step forward before, but it didn't work. So now she's learned to live with it, and she doesn't want to live through it again. Yolande says, I hope, like, I hoped that you'd look like me, because if he had a type, it would be easier to understand. And, but it, it doesn't help her. But then she kind of, she, she inspires a bit of confidence as she believes it's about saving another woman's soul, saving another woman's face. And she helps her feel better by saying, look, if you do it this time, you will not be on your own, and you will be believed. It was a really emotional and really, really good. It's, it's why they introduced these extra characters, because it does feel like, in the end, you've introduced the pastor, who now has five victims that he's sexually assaulted. You don't just do that. And don't bring them into the story, and allow him to, uh, and like allow these victims to get justice. Like you wouldn't set that up just to make it ho as horrific as possible. Um. So, yeah, it's really good stuff. But yeah. Anything the, on this? What's the difference between a pastor and a priest? Again, they're the same thing. Uh, I think it's a it's a different. It's like a slightly different role in the church. Fair. Very similar, but yeah. Yeah, I just, I just, you know, you get priest and pastors give me creepy vibes. You know? Especially in EastEnders. EastEnders never really had the best uh, track no, record with priests or pastors. In real life, the only, the only priest I got along with was a priest called Father Jägerbong, because he loved Jäger. Right, I, I, I've, probably, I've probably told this before, but I had, had a priest in the old town who loved to drink. So, like, he, he'd order some Jägerbomb. So, obviously, we nicknamed him Father Jägerbomb. He was a big, fat priest, and I fucking loved him. It's a shame they moved him to a different town. But he was a lovely priest. He, like, if we could bring Father Jägerbomb into fucking, into EastEnders, I'd be so happy. I'd be so happy. There's a priest who's ready to fucking go on the prowl and have a drink. Be like, lads, 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 lads. And obviously, like, but, but no, no, in East Enders, we have to have a priest who fucking is a dodgy blow. Like, I, I'm a father Jaeger bomb in fucking East Enders. Give me him. Don't give me my other priest who, who ran around in shorts, but he, but he looked like fucking Herbert the Pervert. Like, just a wrinkly old man. Like, oh, oh. But yeah, um, and the final bits of this, though, is Yolande and Delia going to the police. And yeah, it's uh, it's a very it's a very powerful set of scenes, and it's just it it's really sad to see that the pastor has preyed on like vulnerable older women who likely aren't gonna be believed as much, especially in comparison to him being like a man of God and 
that whole reputation behind him. But they really did do a good job of this. And uh, it's just... They're like... Yolande and, and, and Delia only knew each other for like... They've only known each other for like for like 10 minutes. And they're inspiring such confidence in one another. And it's it's very wholesome in a way. It's horrific that the actions have taken place that mean that they are now linked. But also... It's... Uh, it's just, it's a very, yeah, it's just really good. It's really good. Um, all right, next up, we have the Nugget storyline. As Nugget and Ravi have a heart to heart and the boxing contest. Uh, this also, there's a bit of the Phil and Sharon stuff in there. Uh, Sharon is angry at Phil for mentioning to Alby that he is his new dad, so she won't let him have contact for a while. Like, oh, yeah, Phil, we can be friends. What, you told Albie you're his dad? Over. Fuck's sake. <laughs> Fuck's sake. It, it's not even Phil's fault. Albie went, are you my new dad? And he went, yeah. Like, what's he going to say? Like, nah, call me uncle for now. Like, he, he, he was set up. The, the ball was perfectly aligned with a bat. He may as well have smacked it. Um, you know, it's actually flying in my ears right now. The cons over here. Like, letdown is playing in my ears. And I'm just thinking of, like, Phil and Aldi. Like, Aldi when he's first. Letdown? Letdown by Radiohead. And um, I'm just imagining Aldi when he's 13 listening to this song. Like, which my real dad was here, like, Yanu. And he's just singing the words, and then it's like, oh. Phil, Dad, how you doing? Davy, how you doing? And like Phil's like, I'm your real dad. Like, oh no. Because obviously, I, I love Albie's acting. Like, Albie like, is the one of the best actors on the show. That one line he delivered last year that, my, is a fucking iconic line for me. He, he lives on an EastEnders, he lives on an EastEnders infamy. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a, it's a good one. I I will never forget him being a mummy. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, it was uh, it was decent. It was it was good fun. Uh, where am I heading with this one? Do do do. So yeah, so Nugget and and Ravi. Oh no, no, fuck me! I'm all I'm getting all confused. Uh, Zach is struggling after being sent pictures of Dolly, but he's getting denied access. Yeah, yeah, Zach, I, I, I will let you be a, be a dad. Denied access, by the way. <laughs> uh, not allowed. Um, Martin suggests he get involved in this boxing tournament next week, and he gets both Nugget and Navani involved. Phil doesn't see the problem with telling Albie he is his dad, and Billy and Honey yell at Phil for, for yelling at his kids. Nugget wonders if he should up his dose before the boxing competition and feels pathetic, so gets angry at everyone. He then opens up to Ravi about how pathetic he feels and looks. And Ravi gives Nugget the once over and trains Nugget in the gym, trying to help him feel a bit more confident and believing in himself. Uh, Nugget is feeling strung out by the steroids, though, and he keeps feeling put out by his body, and it, he feels like it's failing him. And during the weigh-in, he, he doesn't really want to step on the scales, and he throws up in a bin, and Zach rules him out of the competition. Zach also overhears the conversation where he hears them mention juice, and it's like, you know. Zach tells Ravi of, like, Nugget struggles and lets him know his suspicions of Nugget and Denzel being on steroids, and Ravi is like, you don't fucking know what you're talking about. Don't fucking talk to me about it. You prick. Um, and Ravi tells Nugget, look, you don't cut corners and you get to the finish line. While Nugget is feeling very sorry for himself. The funniest bit about this storyline to me is because they're still teenagers and they don't have and they don't make food for themselves. Their only concept of protein is getting fried chicken, which is hilarious. Like, that's not good fucking protein. That's full of extra shit. Like, it, 
For fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to get really hench. I'm going to get all this protein in. Oh, you eating eggs? Nah. I'm having protein shakes and fried chicken. <laughs> okay, sound. It's just the fucking naive kid thing to do. Um, anything on this one? Uh, um, hmm. I actually, I didn't mind this, but I, I, I just don't like it. Oh yeah, I'm the Sigma, I'm the Sigma, I'm the Sigma. Like, I'm a true alpha male, you know, making myself stronger and shit. I, mean, I don't care. I don't care. Leave me fair enough. Me. What? I said fair enough. I'm fat. You're making fun of me, lads. I'm fat. Stop. Stop trying to make me skinny. I, I'm a fat bastard. No, they're not trying to make you skinny. They are. They're putting words in my head, man. Um. Oh, but yeah, it's uh. Honestly, I'm getting slightly worried now because everybody thinks maybe fucking maybe maybe Nugget dies and Nish gets his heart, but like. You know, the steroids are clearly doing something dodgy with Nugget, so... <laughs> so you're getting slightly worried. Getting slightly. But... It's all good. Uh, we'll see. Um, and now, finally, the big fucking topic. The aftermath of Stevie taking the money. It was Will. And the introduction of the new Mitchells. The day after, everyone is gossiping about Stevie taking the money. He has a point to prove that he didn't fucking steal it. And he explains he wouldn't stoop so low and decides he's going to prove who stole the money himself. He's getting evils from everyone and Stevie kind of clocks that Will is being a bit shifty. And Will is fucking... Uh, you know how everybody gave him credit for being a better actor than he is? Yeah. <laughs> I, I I appreciate that they're trying to show that Will is a bit naive. He's a teenager. He, he's also a Mitchell, but he's never really like put a foot wrong. So he's never really had to apologize and take responsibility for his actions. But he is like trying his fucking best. Like, it's, it's like, Stevie's like, look me in the eye. And Will's like... Uh, uh, Gina's doing drugs. Must be her. Uh, it's like, like, it's shaking like a shitting dog trying to avoid suspicion. Do you know, oh no, I don't know if this is a good person, but to bring up the situation from earlier, it's like Dr. Disrespect in his statement. I didn't do it, and if I did do it, I would have told you, but I didn't do it. Did I steal the money? Maybe. But I'm yeah. not fucking leaving. Yes, uh, I'm not taking responsibility, so it's someone else's fault. It's like, okay. It's like me. Oh, yeah, you... mm? It's like me. Did you put butter on the fridge, Piggy? No. You fucking did. I didn't. Leave me alone. It's like, Piggy, there's only two of us in the house. And I didn't fucking put the butter back in the fridge. Well, not my fault the fridge has butter on it. It's like, well, it fucking is, though, isn't it? <laughs> Fucking is. It wasn't me. Uh, I wasn't playing a game like, ah, this will be funny. Oh, I'm I'm going to put butter on the fridge and I'm going to put my hand in it and then I'm going to blame Piggy. Which is clearly what happened. Um, Stevie accuses Gina and gets thrown out of the pub and he finally, he finally asks Phil, like, Phil, what the fuck is your problem with me? Why the fuck do you hate me so much? And then Stevie's like, you're, you're, you're still living in Eric's shoes, aren't you? Which has to be an absolute deep cut, because, you know, that's what Phil has desperately been trying to avoid. Um, and when speaking to Mo, he realises that Will is the most likely suspect, but he probably let his, like, his, his familial pride get in the way. And Billy decides this is enough with Stevie. There's no point of return. And but Will storms out the pub as Phil badmouths him, and Stevie follows him, done demanding to know the truth. Stevie yells at Will to sort his shit out and act like a grown up. But when Stevie grabs Will, it's too far, and Will pushes him up uh, as he pushes him off, and he falls down and hits his head and is unconscious. I I want to put in here. I fucking 
I hated this scene, but I, I, no, no, I didn't hate this scene. I hated his acting because his acting is so fucking cartoony to me. No, get off me, please, 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 get off me. Stop touching me. Stop touching me. Ah. But, but, I mean, he's he's a scared little kid. Yeah, but still, Jana wouldn't have buckled under that pressure. She would have been like, fuck you, Roy Hook. Yeah, but, I mean, it's always a... I mean, first you have to be careful, because fucking... He, he, he is an old man either way. <laughs> so, they have to fucking... Yeah, it's just, they always have to weirdly, like, camera frame it to make it look fine. Is always the the issue. So it, it all of these things generally look dodgy. But yeah, like Will is, like I said, I feel like some people may call his acting shit. I don't think it's been shit. I do just think he is a naive Mitchell who's never really had to do anything but like for himself. Like with Honey and Billy as your parents, you don't really do anything, do you? Like. He he feels like he has been very insulated from any like wrongdoing, and this is probably the first time he's actually like struck out and been a dick. But then again, most people are bad at taking responsibility for their actions, anyways. So, um, but yeah, uh, one uh, Phil witnesses Will Scarper from the house and goes to investigate. And he finds an unconscious Stevie on the floor. And so Phil calls an ambulance and gets him back to hospital. Honey and Billy say they're proud of Will for doing the right thing. As fucking Phil is called being like, yeah, Stevie's in the hospital. You, Billy, you better get here. Billy doesn't buy Phil's story of Stevie being found alone. And Billy starts to struggle with what if this is the last conversation we, we, we've ever had. It's just going to be me saying, I'm done with you. Phil understands that Will had something to do with Stevie's fall, but he convinces the police of no, fa of no foul play, and Will then explains everything to him. There is a little funny bit of this where Phil's like, because Will's told, because Will's told this story about three times, it obviously, he, he explains less and less. So he explains how he sent, a picture, he, sent, he sent a picture of his knob to a guy called Kyle, and he's like, why, do you fancy him? It's like, nah, he, he was catfishing me, and you have Phil just kind of like, what? <laughs> what? I, I, do, I do find it funny of, of nobody understanding what the fuck. Like, <laughs> so you did what? And Will has to fucking embarrassed explain, like, penis. It's, it's, it's good fun whenever they do it. Um, and... He doesn't, yeah, Phil doesn't really understand it. He just says, look, I need Kyle's name. Phil then intimidates Kyle with his favorite baseball bat, Batty, <laughs> takes the money back and demands he smashes up his phone and steals the SIM card. Oh my God, I fucking loved it. I two of us. I loved it. I fucking loved it. it like, we, we, we talk about Emma Harding as, like, as a mean bitch. They're and they're getting kids. That's not not Phil. Well, I know the kid's not a kid. He's sixteen, I just assume, or he's eighteen. One or the other. Um. But oh fucking hell! The fact that he just came up to him with a baseball bat. I be shitting myself. Angry bald man looking at me, telling me to take the money out of my pocket. No, Phil, that's my money. Fuck off. I mean, I'd I'd give the money to a to a guy with a bat. I, I'd like, fuck like, this. I'd like an him. angry, an angry bald pit bull. Fuck that. I, I do, I do what that one guy did on the news. What are you gonna do? Hit me? He just fucking smashes him. Uh, but yeah, I was also Phil being quite smart. First, going, all right. First up, give me the phone. Also, smash it, and also give me that fucking SIM card, you little melt. Like, oh, hey, he's fucking Phil. He's a smart man. He's a smart man, he is. I mean, uh, he, he doesn't realise that they could be saved on a like, Google Drive. Well, I mean, if it is, you know, the police will be like, fucking hell, what's, what's that you got there, you dirty bastard? Here, what do you have on your computer? Um, but, 
Yeah, keeping that moving, though. Uh, Phil figures out the best way to get around this is to put Stevie at odds with Will, so he blames Stevie, claiming he stole the money and he was going to plant it on Will. Phil decides he'll do anything to get Stevie out of their lives, but the nurse makes a phone call to a certain bold lad, Teddy, who is the dad, Barney, the introverted, nerdy, book-reading kid, and Harry, who is the charming stud of an older brother. I'm disappointed. If like Teddy, if Teddy uh, Barney, why couldn't he have a cool name like Philly or something? Like what? H Harry. Like it doesn't fit with the Barney and Teddy. You know, it doesn't fit. His name's Harry. It doesn't fit. Yeah. What do you mean, Teddy Barney Harry? Yeah, yeah, but it's makes Harry. sense. It's Harry, it's not E, it has to have an E in it. Yeah, but you, I mean, like, phonetically, it kind of has an E at the end. Like, ha like Harry. You know, what's, what's the last vowel sound? It's an E. There's an E on the end. Fucking correct me. Yeah. Not spelling, right? I, I just, I just don't get what, I just don't get your point. What, what would you choose? Jimmy. I, I, I'd name the three of them. Can't like... call him Jimmy. Why? Fucking shit name, that's why. Timmy? No. Johnny. I guess Johnny Johnny would have been fine. Alfie. Can't have another Alfie. You but it's also him. also Teddy Teddy's called Teddy calls himself Ted. So he doesn't even have the fucking E on the end, does he? Half the time. Why, why is he called Ted? That's my guy. Uh, why, do you, why does he call himself Ted? Like, Teddy, is on, there's only three extra words in Teddy. After Ted. Yeah, yeah, but do you want to, do you want to, do you want people to think of you as a fucking cuddly bear? Yeah. Or do you want people to take you seriously? I mean, you ought to be taken seriously, mate. How can he be taken seriously when he's right? I say that. You're taking the piss out of names. Your, your alias is Piggy. Yeah. <laughs> Your alias is Apple Dreams. Don't fucking start with me. Fine by me. So, go, turns into Aqua. Beautiful stuff. Go by Ash. My name. Love it. But, like, you can't say he has to be taken seriously when he's wearing a pink shirt tied around him and he's walking in. He looks, he, he looks like the only gay lad in the village. That's an, uh, that's, that's how it takes. No, I, I, I think he he's a he's a sexy fucking man in he's my a, eyes. He's a sexy man, but he's I, fucking he's a gorgeous bold man. I just can't take him seriously with his shirt around his shirt. Yeah, like the fucking jumper is a bit is a bit on the nose. But whoa, whoa, he's whoa, fucking love love me some of this man. You know, you know me. I like I like good hair, but he keeps himself well fucking groomed. Whoa, love Teddy. He's fantastic. I, I thought Teddy's like son was going to be revealed as the one he's fucking with. Will. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, could have could have happened. But like, um, Teddy, Teddy. Uh, like, like, hey, why can't we, why can't we call him Eddie? But spell it E D D Y, like Eddie Guerrero did in WCW. So you you just you just want to take the T off his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eddie, hello, Eddie. How's it going, Eddie? Fucking hell. I mean, Teddy, like you, like you said, do you want to think of a cuddly bear? Even though, even if he was serious to me, I just still think you can't was... choose his fucking name. He was just born. It's he... Stevie for having shit judgment. And and the mum. I mean... Hey, I mean, you don't choose your name. I mean... He fact, can't fucking change it. I mean, he he has a weird, like, name history, because Billy Mitchell is named after the real-life person Billy Mitchell. Fucking... Fucking... Teddy is, like... He, so he, have, he's not. So Teddy and Billy are, like, have the same name, kind of, the four end and wise. Like, there, like Stevie has some obsession with the E I the E Y, like. 
He does. He does have a bit. I feel like I feel like this is how Jonathan Ross came up for arguments of people dying at Christmas. Hey, this is the level I feel we're at. It's like, yeah, well, he, they've all got E's in their names, and that's why I think Martin's a dead body at Chris. Like, what? Fuck, what's going on here? Why is this a five-minute segment where you just don't like the name Teddy for some reason? Teddy! What's I'm... wrong with Teddy? Teddy! I, just, I, I, feel like the, I feel like the person makes the name. The actor makes the name. Fuck you now. I mean, when he was a baby, did they just call him Teddy Bear? I'm sure they did. That's enough of that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull out my own hair, and I'm gonna look like fucking Teddy in a second. You're gonna look like um, Uh, two. I, I'm still rock. I'm pretty much rocking the Barney haircut right now, untouched. Like I said, I wore, I had that hair as a kid, and I'm like, yeah, uh, uh, no. But it also feels like he is autism coded, so. No, no, he can't have a can't have an can't have a person with autism who has similar mannerisms to me. No, <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, Ted claims he is. I know. Yeah, and at the end, it says, "I know where he is, and he isn't going to get away from us that easy." Um, and the one thing that did buckle me is. He's been called as like the person of interest to call if Stevie's in hospital, and and it's already been casted that we know that they are Mitchells, but the fucking credits still call them by their first names, which buckled me. Like I I like it. It's stupid attention to detail. It's good fun, as if we don't know who they are. <laughs> like <laughs> it's just great. Um. Billy is furious when Stevie wakes up and tries to get him to admit his wrongdoings. Stevie understands and apologizes despite him having fucking nothing to do with it. Will says sorry, but Stevie says tell tell it tell it to someone who deserves it. Um Harry is the cheeky chappy and flirts with the women. Barney spends his time reading while Teddy is a charming older gentleman. T uh Ted Ted tells Harry to look after your brother while I find dad. Um Will is mortified and is told it's time to grow up and look after your family, but I've got this. I'll deal with this hand. You know, you just fold, walk away. It'll be fine. And Ted shows up as Stevie hauls Will away. As Phil asks Jay and Callum to watch the footy with him, but they aren't too keen, while Denise is like, guys, all his kid, none of his kids like him. Just spend some fucking time with him, for fuck's sake. I'll be like some. He does, but she, Sharon's not letting him see him, so. Yeah, but Alvin can make his own decisions. He's four. Um, but, yeah, and just spend some time with him for fuck's sake. Like, as much as, like, Jay's given, Phil's given Jay a decent chunk. So, like, at least fucking spend some time with him for fuck's sake. Um... Ted says, if there's anything you want to tell me, it's the time. But Big Mo interrupts Teddy's talk with Stevie. And like as uh, as Ted susses out that something's a bit off with Will. And Ted then decides to follow Bill, Billy and Will home while they bicker. He sends off the boys to like uh, to acclimate themselves to their new surroundings. And yeah, Teddy, he's clearly well off. He's, he's driving a white Mercedes Benz. It's a like, war. Oh. Whoa. I, I think it was white, at least. I don't remember anymore. Um, he figures out his best approach is to find the spare key under the plant pot and breaks into Billy's house. Not really Mo <laughs> Yeah, but he, they wouldn't be too keen. Um, yeah, Mo doesn't buy Stevie's sob story, though. It's like, oh, I didn't know him, blah, blah, blah. Shut up, Mo. Leave me alone, please. I don't have the answers for you just yet. Uh, Harry and Barney bicker a little, but they, they both seem to take care of each other and, and care about each other. They they mock Teddy's don't show us up and like and like do the top button up shit. While Harry looks keen over at the arches, he's clearly looking for work. Honey, fresh out the shower, finds fucking Ted looking at family photos. 
And then he's like, ah, oh, do you want to put some clothes on? Oh, no, let me just talk when we're all a bit more dressed, you know, because he's supposed to be a gentleman. Um, and he doesn't really give anything away, and he all he and he, he apologizes for any upset, but also just says, "Do you know Stevie Mitchell?" And she goes, "Not anymore." Um, Penny catches Harry's eye while she's inspecting the archers, looking for a job, and they flirt up a storm. And Teddy catches himself flirting with Sharon. He speaks some nonsense. She has no fucking clue what he said. <laughs> like he says some like he says some like. It sounds like he's he's reading like he's 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 made up his own little quote and it's just it's nonsense. It's fucking nonsense. Um Harry approaches Phil in the boxing gym and wants a mechanic job. Uh and he's like, Oh, you look like the gaffer. You the gaffer? Do you have any jobs going? And then Phil bluffs him, but Harry is persistent. And then I also joked about saying Harry is the kid that Phil wanted. <laughs> Harry is definitely the kid that Phil wanted. Um, we also see that he, he constantly feels the need when he's supposed to be smarter, he does up the top. Button. Proving that he... Oh, feel good. Nope. Oh. Alright, we're back. Um, yeah, he constantly... He, he constantly finds himself trying to listen to his dad's, like, teachings, but also, like, it's like, oh, I need to be smart. Top button done up. So it teases that he's he tries too hard to be uh, to be likable and to be accepted, I guess. Um. Uh. Yeah. Barney introduces himself to Avani, who shows him some kindness. She finds him interesting. Can't imagine she runs in too many book reading introverts. So we're we're learning. Hmm? I mean, it is Walford because like. I don't think half the people don't know how to read. Yeah. Uh, yeah, half of them are on steroids, drunk, or just read for the like Pastor Clayton. Pastor Clayton True. can read, but he only reads that silly book on the Bible. Um, and but yeah, that there, there, there's like a, a like because B- Bonnie's like cleaning his shoes, like oh, dad, dad like dad, dad lo- lo- loves the shoes white, and um, he voted for Brexit clearly. <laughs> do, 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 do. Um, doesn't seem like a Brexit man, honestly. He seems like a UKIP man. <laughs> it doesn't exist anymore. Um, Harry, yeah, Harry flirts with Gina, but is rebuffed. Then runs into Penny, who suggests, "Let's drink at my place." Now, once again, it's the old time where the EastEnders subreddit, a, a bit that a, a little bit a little bit prudish. It's like who who shags someone immediately after they've just met. It's like, look, people want to fuck, all right? Let them fuck. They, I made this joke earlier. You don't need to finish at the same time and say I love you as you both finish. For fuck's sake, some people just want to have some fun. What, what's Penny the... clearly likes to fuck. Harry clearly likes to fuck. What's the problem? What's the fucking song I'm thinking of? But like, the worst song to find out will be fucking... Oh, what are ding, bang, dong? Oh, what are ding, dang, dong? Oh, fuck, what's it called? Oh, I don't know. Shabble, 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 All right, um, there we are. What Piggy said. Um, but yeah, like people being like, ah, oh, who does that? Who, who shags someone? It's like Bianca and Junior, fucking Priya and Peter. Like sometimes you just want a bit of fun, all right? No reckon, questions. Do you, do, you, do you reckon? Do you reckon Penny's got that fucking goodness? What? The goodness, you know. You think? Do you think she's a lovely? You think she? You think she's the aggressive one, or do you think she's the smooth sailing one? I'm not answering that fucking question. Yeah, look, the um, fictional character. The fictional character. Still weird. Um, the the uh, kid Phil threatens. Dad shows up and says he's a really snooty solicitor and he's he's really campy. It's kind of great. So I was like, "You've been messing with my son. I'm a solicitor. I've taken down bigger, scarier men than you." And Phil goes, "Phil, Phil's like, yeah, try it. 
I was with Jay all night, and Callum's a policeman. Fuck off. And they get upset at this and storm out and say, fuck you, I don't even want to be here. Phil also, he bought he bought tickets to Wimbledon, the mad bastard. He's 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 got that fucking moolah, he does. He's rich. He can bring Ted if he wants. Yeah. Ted Ted'd fit in at Wimbledon he would with his little jumper. So are we are we suggesting that these are the first ever posh mentioned? <sighs> Maybe. I really want I really want Teddy to go on a rant. I thought of the problems in this country. Or that country um. in Britain. I, I, who would not love that fucking Teddy? Being the new Karen Taylor. Going on a rant. Bloody can't say anything these days. Bloody cancel culture. Bloody hell. Um, but... Yeah, uh, yeah, and so Phil, he's rich. He, I bet he's buying strawberries and cream at Wimbledon, How much and he that gets cost? it on his shirt too much. Um, oh, no, you sure? Yeah, I'm all right. You don't want to see the king. Hmm. You don't want to see the king of Wimbledon. Who's the king of Wimbledon? King Charles. No, the king of Wimbledon. Um, uh, there we are. Um, they both storm out. They get angry. Ted finds Will alone in the middle of the square. Wants some information. She offers to buy him a drink. Harry claims he likes it around here and wants to see her again. She reminds him to stop trying so hard. Stop doing your top button up. Doesn't fucking suit you. Stop it. And obviously Jack comes out and it's like, oh, hello. Who's this? And she's like, ah, oh, he did a job. He cleaned my pipes pretty well, and then you essentially just have Jack like, ah, ah. Why are you telling me that? It's like, Dad, I can fuck on like you, Dad, and I'm disabled. Fuck off. Um, The Mitchells... Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Mitchells gather around Billy's to figure out who the fucking bold lad lad is. He... Like, he has told him everything, but still lied about Stevie taking the money. Ted doesn't buy it, though, and nearly tempts, nearly tempts confession out of a sheepish will, and the Mitchells gather around just as Harry shows up, while Stevie finds this to be the perfect moment to introduce Teddy Mitchell, Billy's brother. You also have uh, Harry, who's like, yeah, I'll throw you through a fucking window, Phil. Just, like, <laughs> just, just try it, try it, try me. Which is fun. He's gagging for a fight. Exactly. Um, and yeah, and then that that that's a duff duff. A, a big blow up kicks off during the pub as they all scream at each other until Honey's like, "Look, let's go back to Billy's. We'll have a fucking talk about it." And Billy just screams at Stevie, being like, "Why would you, you chose you chose them over me?" Ted tries to calm Billy by explaining he isn't calling him, and then gives Stevie a pep talk to go after Billy. Stevie tells him he's known Ted and his boys for the last 20 years. He loves Ted's lot, and he loves Billy's lot, too. Uh, he also explains that, just an interesting little thing, apparently Ted's, he, he had a fling with Ted's mum, so keep that in your brain. We'll come back to it later. Wait, who did? Stevie. Oh. Like, as in Ted's mum. Okay, okay. <laughs> Um, Billy feels sorry for himself as he chose Ted over Billy. He and Stevie says, "Stevie says, uh, Billy says, if I if I could have shut the door in your face again, I would have done it again." And Stevie believes, uh, but also Stevie's like, "Yeah, but you did do that, so like I had the chance to be a to be a dad to my son and his boys who didn't know me at the time." Um, and Phil plays the big man, and Ted calls him out. And he just, he starts like, look, all right, if you're fucking hiding something, I want to know who pushed my, my dad. If you don't fucking tell me, we're going we're gonna to have some problems. And he basically forces Will to sweat as he squares up to Phil as Will finally confesses that he was the one who stole the money. Will once again explains the story about the catfish with Honey being like, you, you sent him what? Uh, oh, 
Ah, <laughs> we would have sorted it. Um, and they apologise to Stevie. Ted shakes his hand for put. For, Ted shakes Will's hand for putting his hand up and accepting responsibility. Junior helps Billy get some perspective, though he feels uh, the issue is Billy feels like he feels like he's he's done right by Will. He's done right by Ted, but but Stevie's never really done right by me. But Junior essentially says, look, all right, at some point you're going to stop resenting him and you actually have to let him in. Maybe it's time to actually let him, like, let him in. Uh, Harry has a nice little conversation with Honey where he's a charming lad. Uh, Ted tries Ted tries to work his way around. Phil's just, oh, may, maybe do some business sometime, Phil. And Billy gets back and accepts his brother and shakes his hand. And they're all having a fucking Mitchell get together. They all get some pizza in. But Ted goes to Stevie to talk it through. But he's like, why would you say that my mum was a fling? Like, that's not what it was. So now that springs the question. Who is Teddy's mum? Like, who the fuck is it? And obviously it's a mystery that we will get to. Uh, so I, I look forward to it, you know. I think it'd be really fucking interesting to see what happens. Um, and I, I have no no idea who the fuck it is. No one knows who the fuck it is. But it's going to be a very interesting story. I assume it's going to be an already established character. If I had to guess. But I who the fuck knows, I mean. Ha, butcher. Like, uh, it feels like a way to link him. T- it feels like, like a way to link these characters properly into the show. Like, properly into the show. Uh, but yeah, I, I fucking, I absolutely adore these Mitchells. I absolutely love them. I think their introduction, their introduction is probably. <laughs> The the previous two introductions that I think were great was obviously George Knight's entrance, which was fucking top tier. Um, or like Cindy's return, which I also enjoyed greatly. And but and also Stevie's initial re- like entrance as well. But I genuinely think this is probably the best introduction to a new family they've had in years. Now the question, though, as we have done this before, is... Now it's time to actually give these lads storylines and not just have them leave in a year when they realise that they're not going to fucking get anything to do. Because, oh, you want to know the, the last the last pair that came in? The last pair who came in, their dad was in the hospital. They showed up on the show with a relative already on the square. Well, it was, fin- it was Finley and Felix, who had a combined total of approximately one storyline and that was the entrance storyline. I'm gonna stop you right there, motherfucker. I'm gonna stop you right there. If you're comparing these three lads to fucking Felix and Finley, you know what you can do? Do you know your finger? Go stick it up your bum, smell your shit, and then come back to me. And then you know what you th- what I know you're smelling. Shit. Fucking Felix and Finley. What fucking planet are you on? I mean, it's the whole point where they had a big introduction. Well, my my point more so being is obviously now it's time to do something with the characters. Yeah, but still. Like we've had these we've had these big bold introductions before. We've had these big fucking oh these guys are cool. Nothing for three years and they leave. So the Mitchells are moving to the square. I would assume so. There's no reason to not. And I will say, obviously, obviously, you say that as if I've spent the whole episode saying that these guys are shit. <laughs> like, no, no, I've spent no, the whole episode no, no, glazing no, no, these motherfuckers. No, no, no. Johnny is a bit weird. It's like Felix and Finley. And I'm like, don't you? No, that's like comparing <laughs> athletes to fucking, <laughs> fucking well, dog shit. No, but I mean, you, you take the scenario that they were brought in on. It's their matter. family member, who they have a relative to, is in hospital. And suddenly now that's their introduction to the square. And yeah, sure, Finley was flirting with everyone too. Felix came as Tara Masu. Big introduction. Are they going to get the storylines? 
I mean, yes, they fucking hopefully fucking will. I'm not comparing the characters. I'm comparing the introduction. And the introduction was very similar. And like, as I said before, oh, it's now the whole point to actually give them the storyline that established them as genuine characters and they actually get material to work with so they aren't just recycled in a year or two once they decide, ah, they, you know, we just don't know what to do with you. So you're not fucking done anything for them, though. And they obviously will. They've given a lot of, like, cult personality. All of these characters have interesting aspects of their character and personality. We see Teddy. He seem, he's supposed to be, like, an old-fashioned gent. He's fairly affluent. He has shown that he'll stand up to Phil Mitchell. He's shown that, you know, he may, he, he seems like a decent enough dad. He's instilled some virtues in his kids. But also, maybe, maybe, you know, perhaps Harry constantly feels like he has to try to impress his dad. Maybe he hasn't ever really told him, like, no, no, I'm proud of you. You are good enough. He takes the piss out of him a lot. Maybe there's some problem there. And Barney, to see how he progresses, how he settles into a new place on the show. Um, but yeah, no, I, I do like, I do like this family. As I said before, I think it's the, probably it's in the last two years or so, it's probably my favorite, like one of my favorite introductions to a set of characters. There's genuine reason to like all of them. And I look forward to seeing what they're going to do now that they're likely sticking around. Harry's probably going to go work at the arches. Uh, I assume Barney's still at school. I assume he's going to settle down and kind of probably not entirely fit into the friendship groups that are there. But obviously he'll get he'll get climatized as well. And it'll be interesting to see what Teddy does. It seems like Teddy's probably gonna probably gonna get with Sharon because Sharon it's he's a Mitchell, isn't he? It's it's, it's likely to happen. What would you do if Steve, if, if the person Stevie slept with was Andrew Watts? There's no fucking way that happened. Yeah, there is. Anything's possible. Like, like how how is how is Stevie connected? He's brought like, with Billy. That, that's his. Well, yeah, I mean, but um, but I guess. You know, maybe he could have been with Aunt Sal. I don't know. Maybe. Obviously, Aunt Sal is just related to Peggy. She's not actually like a. She's not actually a Mitchell at all. Just through like association. I don't know. It's probably going to be someone who we already who we already established. Um, but I think it's, it's, it'll be an interesting little fucking. It'll be an interesting story to see. Yeah. Uh, much to say about about these, these introductions. No, no, it's time we get into everyone's favourite. The awards! Alright. Uh, underrated. Underrated Barney. I think Barney. Uh, the, 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 less, the, the dyslexic autistic one. <laughs> he's, he's neither. Maybe. Just Barney, the one who reads books. It's yeah. <laughs> the nicer way to put it. Um, I like, yeah, I like Barney. Uh, I'm just. I'm gonna give it. Give it to Teddy. I love him. He's great, and he's a. He's a four. Oh, I think they oh. cast the wrong person for Teddy. I think I know perfect, who would perfectly cast the best Teddy. Jason mm. Statham. Banger. Um, Keanu Taylor Award um, of Excellence. <laughs> um, he he was great. I he didn't get any uh, scenes, but he 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 was happy with his new daddy. And uh, I, I'm happy for Alfie. I want him to. I'm giving him this award in, in honor of his second dad, uh, Keanu Taylor. This is going to Alvi. He didn't have any scenes, but actually, fuck it. I'm going for the table that, that knocked uh, Stevie out. That's what I'm going for. Fuck you, Alvi. Uh, I'm going to give it to. I'm going to give it to the uh, plant pot that Stevie broke into Billy's house with. Not wooden, of course. Um, and finally, who needs? Slap him down. Well, just uh, for, yeah, <laughs> just for that fucking like it, it was as bad. It's as bad. Like the only comparison I have is a wrestling comparison where it's in TNA, uh, the wrestling company, and it's Samuel Shaw who's in a program with a guy called Mister Anderson, formerly known as Mister Kennedy. And basically, he Mister Kennedy, the wrestler, breaks into Samuel Shaw's uh, like house, 
basically it's allowed in. And then like all you hear is Samuel Shaw going, What are you doing in my bedroom? That's all I could hear when I heard Will being like, Get off me, please, get off me, stop it. Like all I could think of was Samuel Shaw just doing the What are you doing in my bedroom? It's all I could think of. Or or Charlie Jones is Ben Mitchell doing the What are you doing to me, Mr. Johnson? It's all I could think of, like he, 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 I don't know why. Either that or that. Um but yeah, uh, when am I even fucking going with this? Uh, yeah, uh, excuse me, stab it out. Yeah, it's Will as well. It's just, yeah, fuck you. Uh, I, who needs slapping down? It's the people who are comparing these new Mitchell characters to fucking uh, just uh, the people who are like, ah, fucking hate these new characters. And it's like for the first time in a long time, these characters haven't been introduced to be absolute knobheads on their introduction. And like some people are still like, nah, they're still really this. I fucking hate these guys. Like, fucking, do you like anything? <laughs> do you like anything? The answer's no. Um, but yeah, uh, that was really. In, I honestly, it was probably one of my favorite weeks of EastEnders in a long time. Uh, I think they really ramped it up. It was a definite. It was a definite like dose of life that EastEnders kind of needed for a little bit. Now it's still been good. But it hasn't really had that like electric type fucking energy, and I I absolutely hoover these episodes up. So yeah, that is watching Wolford episode seventy eight. That is us done and dusted. Time for me to write more Hollyoaks videos, and time for us to have a little chill. So thanks to everybody who's watching this video. I hope you've been enjoying this. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Make sure to join us in the next video. See you then. Bye bye.